Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade with another tutorial in the Coding Fundamentals in GML 2.3 update series. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about the static keyword. This is a keyword that is new to 2.3. Essentially, the static keyword is a keyword that you can use in functions that will create static variables inside of those functions. So what does that mean? That means that these variables will be defined the first time that the function is called and only the first time that the function is called. And they will then maintain their value unless they are changed or modified from inside of the function. So essentially they create variables that are scoped to the function and can only be interacted with from inside the function. But now we come to a sort of special case, which is static variables inside of constructors. Constructors are actually functions, which if you remember from the struct tutorial will create a struct, but they are actually functions, which means that you can use the static keyword in them. And just like with other functions, using the static keyword inside of the constructor means that the variable will be defined the first time that constructor is run. This is especially useful for creating static methods. However, they are probably tied to the constructor, not to the struct created by the constructor. And I have probably here because we don't actually know what is happening under the hood and the manual doesn't tell us. So we just sort of have to make some guesses based upon how it works. But at the very least, thinking about it this way doesn't seem to lead to any problems. Now what this means practically is that a static variable created inside of a constructor maintains its value and cannot be changed. And the reason it cannot be changed is because the only way to change a static variable is to do so from inside of the function. So if you were to try to modify the variable from inside of a struct created by the constructor, all you'd really be doing is creating another variable with the same name inside of the struct that is no longer linked to the static variable inside of the constructor. Now that sounds confusing, but I think if we just switch over to GameMaker and walk through some of this in the debugger, it'll become clear. So here we are in GameMaker and let's start with some static variables inside of a function. We'll create a simple little function alarm. So it'll be an alarm made out of a function. Here you can see that we are declaring a method variable. We're setting the static variable timer to room speed times five. And then we're decreasing timer by one inside of this function. And if timer is ever less than or equal to zero, we're going to reset the timer and show the message, hello world. And I know I mentioned this in the slides, but I want to repeat it here. Static variables are only declared the first time that a function runs. So this variable right here will only run once, the very first time we call this function. And then no matter how many more times we call this function, this line basically won't happen. Only these lines will. In a way, you can sort of look at the static variable as making a tiny little create event inside of a function where the variable is initialized when the function is called, but after that, this part never runs. And this will be true in all of the other functions we talk about as well. Whenever you see the static keyword in front of a variable, that line of code essentially will only run the very first time the function is called. And after that, it will be skipped. And then if we come over here, I can uncomment that line, and so we'll be calling our function alarm each step. Let's run this in the debugger. So here we are running in the debugger. And in a moment, our, yep, there we go. Our message, hello world shows up. And we can click okay. And it will show up again in a moment. But let's inspect our instance over here. So it just went off again. I'm going to leave it here so it doesn't keep running. You can see that we have a number of different variables down here in our instance. But we don't have the timer variable. And the reason we don't have the timer variable is because this is a variable that essentially belongs to our function. So we have our function alarm right here. The timer variable that is counting down belongs to this function. It never got declared inside of this instance. It can't be accessed from this instance. It can only be accessed from inside of this function. So if we come back over here, you can see that this function right here creates this static variable, and then all of this right here where we're updating the static variable is happening internal to the function. It doesn't actually come out into the instance of this object. Now, I do wanna point out that this function is just for demonstration purposes. I wouldn't actually recommend creating alarms like this, but I felt like it was an easy way to show how this static variable works. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't actually found a use for a pure static variable in a function yet, but, I have found uses for static method variables inside of a function. So if we come over here to array shuffle, this is a function and I'll expand it in a moment. It's going to take an array and it's going to shuffle it. So first we declare the function, then we declare an array with our values pre-sorted, and then we're going to shuffle that array and we'll show the message when we run it. So what does this function look like? 
Well, we'll come back to this right here, the static variable, but it gets the length of the array, and then it repeats for the length of the array, and at each point, it just swaps two positions in the array. And so this is where we're using the static function swap. This function right here is basically a function internal to this function. And it's a very basic array swap. It takes the first position, saves it to a temporary variable, overwrites the value in position one with the value held by position two, and then sets the value in position two to the temporary variable, effectively swapping the two values in those two positions. Now, even this example is slightly contrived because in reality, if you were to write a function to shuffle an array, you would do one of two things. Either you would strive for efficiency, in which case you would include all of this code right here inside of the repeat loop, since it is slightly slower to call a function rather than calling this directly. Or because swapping two values in an array is useful, you would probably actually just want this to be a function on its own. So a function external to this function that any other function could call. And in fact, in my own projects, that's how I have it set up. But you can definitely imagine more complicated functions that might want some repeated code in it. And you might want to turn that repeated code into its own function to avoid repeating yourself, but there might be no reason for that code to be accessible to anyone else. And in that case, you can create internal functions with a static function variable. So let me run this quickly just to show you that it's working. And here we go, 59371260084. It shuffled the contents of that array for us. So that's static variables inside of a function. Now let's talk about the special case of static variables inside of a constructor function. So here we go. We have a very simple constructor function. It's going to create a struct that has two static variables, the static num, which we'll set to zero, and the static return num, which will simply be a function that returns the number. The important thing to remember with static variables is that they're connected to the function. So these static variables are actually connected to the constructor function. Now the struct has access to them. It's somewhere under the hood in GameMaker, but when we run it in the debugger, they won't actually show up in the struct because they're not actually variables to this struct. They're variables to the constructor that this struct can reference. And that means two things. First, that you're saving a lot of space. And we'll see a clearer example of this in a moment. But I wanna talk about the second thing right now. And that is because the struct is merely referencing these variables held by something else, there's really no way for them to change it. If you remember from our static variables and functions, the only way to change a static variable is from inside of the function. But once the constructor has run, what you get is a struct. And that struct, while it can reference these variables, can't actually change them. But this can be a little bit tricky. So if we come down here, we'll create two of these structs and we'll use the function return num, which they each have access to, to return this number. And then we're going to set struct a dot num to 10. And this will work but it won't do what you think it might. You might think that since this is a static number, kind of like a global variable, if we set struct.a num to 10, then struct.b num will also be 10. Instead, what will happen is we will be breaking this connection to the static variable and giving struct a its own variable, its own struct variable num and setting that value to 10. So now if we run these same lines of code again, we will see that struct a return num will return its internal variable num, effectively overriding its connection to the static variable and return 10, but struct b will still return the static variable 10. This is just something to keep in mind, that if you have a static variable inside of a struct, you can't ever really change that static variable. But let's just run this to see it in action. So here we go, num is zero, num is zero. That's these two lines of code right here. And now we get number is 10, that's this line, and once again, number is zero, that's that line. And if we come over here to the debugger, we can actually pull up our two structs and we can see that struct B actually doesn't show us any variables at all. And that's because these variables aren't being held, num and return num, the number and the method variable are not being held inside of struct B. Struct B is simply referencing them held somewhere else. Struct A, however, actually has a struct variable num because we've broken the connection. Prior to this line right here, A would have looked exactly like B. There would have been no values held in it because it would have just been referencing the static variables inside of the constructor. So now you might be thinking, well, why ever even use static variables inside of a constructor? 
And the answer is that while they're generally not super useful for regular variables, for method variables, they're incredibly useful. So if we come over here to the alarm struct constructor that I've used as an example in previous tutorials, you can see that it has one, two, three, four static variables, each of which is a method variable. And what this means is every time we create one of these alarm structs, it will only hold these three variables. We could create a thousand of these. However, every one of the thousand alarms that we created would reference these variables. And this really saves space because instead of us having 4,000 functions, four functions in each of the thousand alarms we've created, we have only four functions. And this can matter a lot. So the alarm struct is very simple, but the other constructor that I've shown in a couple videos is this vector constructor. This is a fairly simple vector constructor. It's 2D only, and it doesn't include every method that you might want to use on a vector. But as you can see, it has a ton of static methods, and you can create a lot of vectors very quickly. In one of my projects, each object of which there can be hundreds or thousands might itself have three to five vectors operating in it. And this is where static methods really start to add up. If every single vector that I created had all of these static methods inside of it, it would take up way more space and be harder to debug. Instead, each constructor has only two struct variables, the X and Y. And all of these methods exist in one and only one place that every struct can call and reference and use on themselves. And so this is the true value of static variables inside of a constructor using them to create static methods so your structs don't have more information in them than you need. So in summary, static variables in functions act like variables of that function that can only be referenced or changed from inside of the function. Static variables in constructors are tied to the constructor and can't be changed from inside of the structs that they create. And their primary use is creating static methods so that each struct doesn't have to have copies of all of the methods that it uses inside of itself. And it can just refer to the one set of static methods created in the constructor. The link in this slide will be below, along with links to the slides themselves and the source code. And that's it. Thanks for watching.